Therefore, the ungodly should not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This is Psalm 1 in its entirety. morning everyone we get ready to have our scripture we have our scripture get ready to have our morning prayer and so we give God praise as we get ready to go to the throne of grace and for those that have tuned in pray with us as we pray right now go ahead my brother let us bow our heads this morning and let us go before the throne of grace Heavenly and all wise God, Master, we come to you this morning, God, to say thank you. Oh God, as the songwriters wrote, God, we just want to say thank you, Master. Oh God, you've been good to us all down through the years, Master. Father God, you watched over us, kept us. Father God, you covered us and been there for us, oh God. Truly in our time of need, O oh Master. Father God, this morning we come asking for forgiveness, O oh God. Father, for we made some mistakes, O oh God. Father God, we haven't always done things the right way, God. So Father, this morning we repent right now in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, O oh God. Father God, now this morning, oh God, some of us, Master, have been carrying burdens around, oh God. Great, brother. Father, some of us have been allowing the things to weigh us down, oh God. Father, some of us have been hurt by having absent fathers, oh God. Some of us have even questioned, have we been good enough, fathers, Master? Father God, but on this morning, God, we come to you, oh God. Father God, we come to you with all of our imperfections, oh God. Father, we come seeking you with all the mistakes that we made, oh God. Father God, we come to you with our burdens on this morning, oh God. Father, we bring it to you this morning, God, because we know that you're not like man, oh God. Father God, we know that you won't judge us on this morning, oh God. As we pull up our robes, God, and show you our wounds, God. But Father, we know you to be a just God. A God that will wrap your loving arms around us on this morning. A God that will heal us on this morning. A God that will love us on this morning in spite of the things that we've done, Master. So, Father, I come praying for this nation as a whole this morning, oh God. Father, some stand in need of one thing, Master. And some stand in need of another thing, oh God. But one thing I know this morning, oh God, that you are a way maker, Master. And it doesn't matter what they stand in need of, oh God. Whether it's mental healing, God. Whether it's physical healing, oh God. God, we know you to be a deliverer. And we know you to be a healer on this morning, oh God. So, Father, we pray right now that you'll heal the land, oh God. Father, as you're healing the land, Master. Father God, we ask you to stop by Bethlehem and stay back this church on this morning, oh God. Father, we ask you to stop by and see about our shepherd on this morning, oh God. Father God, for he needs you on this morning, oh God. Father, we ask you to continue to cover him, Master. Father, continue to give him favor, oh God. Father, continue to give him wisdom, God. Father God, continue to give him strength to run this race, oh God. Father, as you see about the man of God, Father, we ask that you don't forget about the wonderful woman who walks so close to the side of you. Father God, we ask that you don't forget about our first lady of this church, oh God. Because God, sometimes first ladies feel like they're forgotten about, Pastor. But Father God, we want to say thank you for the first lady of this house on this morning, oh God. Father God, we ask this morning that you wrap your love and arms around the whole God. Father God, allow God to know God that there's a crowd up in heaven for all the work that she's done, Master. Father, we pray for their children on this morning, oh God. How they give it selfishly, unselfishly, oh God, that others might have, God, that others might be able to be drawn into your family, oh God. Father, for we just ask that you continue to come and bless them on this morning. 
Father God, cover the whole church family on this morning, oh God. Allow them to know, although we may not be together in the sanctuary, oh God, but we're still together in the heart, oh God. Father, continue to cover us and keep us, Master. Touch my family on this morning. Be with them, oh God. Father, Lord, this is my prayer this morning, your son, Jesus Christ's name. Dr. Thomas, if you could play that for just a, just a little bit more. And I say to all of you that are listening, you know the song, just take a moment on this Sunday morning, this morning that we come to God to worship in spirit and in truth, to just sing within yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you for the saints, wherever they are. Thank you, God. We give you praise. We lift you up. We honor you. Thank you, Father, for how good you did. Thank you, Father, because you have blessed us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for blessing our families. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for providing our needs. Thank you for touching our loved ones. Thank you. For this Father's Day, thank you for how you wrap your arms around all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Deacon Jackson, thank you for that scripture. And Minister Smith, thank you for that prayer. Amen. Let me just share this with you. And we welcome everybody that, that tuned in, that's a part of Facebook Live. Uh, we welcome everybody that are, that's just participating. Your presence, your tuning in is an encouragement to what we're trying to do here at Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, to proclaim the word of the Lord, to encourage folk along the way, to let them know that God understands and God is right there with you, you right now. And we understand there, there are people that are getting sick, people that are out of work, people that are going through challenges in their life. There are senior citizens that, that would like to come back to church, but things are not quite where they need to be just yet. And, and there's no vaccination and all that that we understand and we know about. But we thank you for how you are blessing and keeping the body of Christ. We thank you for how you're blessing and keeping the body of Christ. And some churches may not be open. Some churches may be modified in their services like we are. But we have not modified God. The very God that we serve, that you serve, is the God that's able to lift you, to bless you, to strengthen you, to encourage you, and to allow you to walk in Him. And for that, we just simply say thank you. Let me just share this as well. We appreciate everybody that, that's participating and everybody that supports this, this Facebook Live. Be it member or not member, those from out of town, out of state, wherever you're from, we thank God for you, and we just give God. Before we came on, there were already 200-something people logged on, and for that, we say thank you. We know the numbers will grow throughout the day, but we thank you for those that have logged on and what's happening and how God is blessing. Let me share a few announcements with you real quick. We do have Bible study on Wednesday night, and we use conferencecall.com, preconferencecall.com. And it's at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Let me give you the number, the call-in number. Uh, is 712 is the area code. The number is 770-4010. 770-4010. The access code is 586-727-POUND. 586-727-POUND. And then after we do our Bible study uh, at, from 7 to 8, then other people chime in and, and call and and there's some people that, that we ask and that we utilize their faith in God. And we have a prayer call for our church and for our nation 
and for families that are related and connected to Bethlehem and to all those that are friends of Bethlehem, for everybody, those that are suffering, those that are going through, we pray, we pray, and yes, we're praying for you. And the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we pray in faith that God will bless and take care of you and look after you. And in the midst of whatever comes your way, because we're hearing more people coming down with coronavirus. I've heard uh, some in Virginia that I know and, and some in North Carolina and Winston-Salem and in Guilford County and Alamance County that I know of. And, and we just know that God is still, he's got us. And it doesn't matter, God still got us and he gives his angels charge over us. So we're going to just, we're going to go with another selection right now. And I want you just to just hear this and let God, and let God minister to you. Let God minister to you.
everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. And for those of you you couldn't see, but there's a little bit of dancing and shouting going on. We got another yes, Lord, in our soul. So we give God praise. And I want to say this real quick before we preach today. We want to well, we want to wish every father, every father, every uncle that's been a surrogate father every coach that's acted in the role of a father, every teacher that has been a father to students that they've looked up to you as a father because the fathers may have been deceased or the father may be out of the home. And we also thank God for, and, and just wish all of you that, that have been in the role of a father, and, and particularly this, listen, there, there are children in homes that don't have fathers. For whatever reason, they don't have fathers. I'm not condemning anybody, whatever reason. But then, when the mother finds somebody that she connects to in love, and that man comes into the house and into the home, they, they connect, they marry, and they get connected, and, they, and even if they're not married, and, but they're not, you know, until they get married, the man that says, I'm going to treat your children, your son, like he's my son. I'm going to encourage him and support him and teach him and protect him and look after him like he were my own son. And for those of you, sometimes you, you aren't a, a father, but you are in the role of a father. And so we thank God for you too when we pray for you. And that's a powerful thing. All right, we want to talk this morning, and I'm going to share with you from Genesis chapter 18, and uh, beginning at the 17th through the 19th verse, and then there's some other things that we will cover and talk about. But listen, here's God's word for his people, for everybody, actually. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. I want to talk to you today from the thought, the template for a godly man. The template for a godly man. You know what a template is. And those of you that are familiar with, with word processing on your computer, a template is can be a document that, that you fill in and that you fill in this part, and you fill in that part, and when you're through filling in things, you have a complete document that you're looking for and that you're looking at that says and meets certain criteria and does what you want done. A template is something that, that is a model of what is expected and what should be. So I'm talking about the template for a godly man, the model of what a godly man should be. Now, before I go any further with this, let me just share. We're talking about Abram or Abraham. And, and I preach from Genesis from time to time. And Abraham is a figure that I'm still intrigued with. But as God was speaking to me about the message that we're going to share today, that we need in this world a template. People need to understand what a godly man should be like. And for those that are here today and the men that are here today, I thank God for your presence and who you are and how you are trying to, to exhibit godliness and to be that example of that template that God is, expects us to be. Well, let's talk about Ab Abraham. And before God spoke this, let's go back in time. Abraham was known Abram back then. His father was Terah. Terah had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran died in the land of his nat nativity. 
Ur of the Chaldees. Terah left his home of Ur to go to Canaan. Abram and Haran's son Lot went with Terah to a place called Haran. Same thing as the, the son that died, his name. Terah stopped his journey to Canaan. He's going to Canaan. He stopped his journey to Canaan and settled in Haran. Now, when you catch this, he stopped the journey to Canaan and settled in Haran with Abram and his wife and Lot. And in the process, well, let me ask this. Why did he stop his journey? The Bible doesn't really say why he stopped his journey, but why do we stop our journey? What happens when we stop our journey? Sometimes when God is using us and expects us to do more, sometimes we get distracted and we stop our journey. Sometimes we become complacent and we stop our journey. We lose our dream. We lose our vision. Maybe we get discouraged. Maybe we just get tired. A mindset says, I don't want to stay in the game any longer. I don't want to struggle with this. I'm, I'm comfortable right here. I'll stay right here. I know that I was going someplace else. I know that in my life I had some challenges that I was going to meet. But I also had some dreams of what life could be like and what should be like. And so I was in the process of going. But then I stopped for whatever reason. And people stopped. Some of you have had dreams. Some of you have had ideas. You've had visions. You've had, had goals that you have set. And you started working toward them, but you stopped somewhere before you reached the goal. Maybe you hit your head on against the wall. Maybe you fell. Maybe somebody said you can't make it. Somebody said it won't work. Somebody said this won't happen to you. It's not for you. And so you stopped. And as you stop, your progress stopped as well. And where you could have gone, you delayed. You stopped. You did not go forward because of whatever reason you stopped. And that was terror. He stopped. And now he's in Haran. And in the process of time, Terah dies. He dies. Now, I need to go back to the 12th chapter because after he died, let me tell you what happens. Just as Terah was headed to Canaan, and he stopped and didn't make the journey, the 12th chapter of Genesis gives us some enlightenment. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country where you're living. Get out, leave it, and from your family that might be around here, and from your father's house, those that, that were still connected to your father, and go to a land that I will show you. Go to a place that I'm going to show you. And then he says, I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Now, now that's a powerful thing. I'm going to elevate you and, and you're going to be a blessing. Hallelujah. How many of you, God has raised you up and lifted you up and you became a blessing to other people. You know what I'm talking about because God used you and he told you to move from where you're at to go to another place. And then listen to this. And listen to this verse. And I will bless them that bless thee. Oh, that's powerful right there. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. And in you, Abram, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Well, what did Abram do? Did he stop and say, no, I don't think I can make this journey? This is what happened. Abram departed, and you know his name later was changed to Abraham. But Abram departed, and as the Lord had spoken to him, 
His nephew Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Let me share something. You might be up in years. You may not be in your 20s or 30s or 40s. You may have thought that life has passed you by, but God can still use 60 and 70 and 80 year old men. I think of Caleb. When God, when Caleb was stepped forward after they, the children of Israel went in the promised land, he said, Caleb, he told Joshua, he said, give me my mountain that was promised to me. I'm, I'm 80 years old, 80 something years old, and I'm just as strong as I was before. And, and he got his inheritance of what God had promised him. And you don't have to be 20. And I thank God for the millennials and those that have been protesting. I thank God for the young children that, that have found ways to protest, those in high school and, and even in middle school. We've seen example in Charlotte this past weekend. And, and we thank God for them. But God is still blessing those old timers. And God is going to allow you. You think you may have missed the boat, but God's sending another one for you to get on right. and to get to where God wants you to go. I praise God for that. And so let's share this. God now speaks to Abram, tells him to leave, that the country he's at, that, and he also tells him to move from his family, his kindred, you know kindred, nephews, nieces, and, and other relatives. And he says, move from them, from his father's house, to a land that I will show you. Now, I want to make a point right here. God often chooses an offspring. Hear me. Hear me. God often chooses an offspring of who he originally told to do something to complete the task. I want you to understand that. God often chooses an offspring. He might have chose you to do such and such, and you only went so far and stopped. God has a way, I've seen it in the past, God has a way where he will take an offspring and move things forward even greater than what was expected. He's done that. Let me give you an example. There's a church in Winston-Salem, St. Peter's World Outreach Center. Uh, I have a cousin that pastors that church, but his father, his father, Bishop Reuben Hatch, was the pastor. And, and when Bishop Reuben Hatch had gone but so far, he turned the reins over to his son before he passed. And the son was able to take the vision that daddy had and the faith that daddy exhibited and helped instill in him and they have a mega church now from what was a church that was beginning to bloom and prosper now they have a mega church on several acres several 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 acres of land but god used the son to carry on what the daddy had begun I'm telling you that God can use your children when you've gone as far as you can go. And when God, and, and, and you may pass this, you may pass and you funeralize, but your child often picks up that vision and picks up that dream. I want you to understand that. That's what Abram did. Uh, his father evidently had been influenced by God to go to Canaan. I don't know the conversation that, that God had with him. It's, that doesn't say. He picked up, took his family, went to Iran. We don't know God's ultimate plan for what was going to happen. But when dad died, God began to speak to Abram. Amen. And he told Abram, I want you to get up, get out of this country, Leave your family, your relatives that are here behind. Leave from your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. Isn't God so good that he will take part of the process that has begun in someone else? And then if you have the faith to listen and to heed to God and to serve God, that God will move you along even further. There are people in our history that have left a legacy to us. 
couldn't read well, didn't get through high school, or maybe didn't have the opportunity to go to high school or college. But they did the best they could, but they left the legacy for their children, and their children ended up going to school and getting out of, you know, some folks didn't get past the eighth grade. But their, and I'm talking about years ago, but their children were able to go past their, where their parents went and go to high school, complete high school, leave high school, go to college, and do things that their parents were not able to do. And for that, we say thank you. I'm a product of that legacy. Many of you are a product of that legacy. My dad didn't get a chance to go to high school. Became a businessman, began an auto body shop, owned an old auto body shop. And he would tell me, he said, son, I, I really wanted to be a doctor, but my parents they couldn't afford to send me away to high school or college. But I, I figure that if a doctor can put a heart in a man and put mechanisms in a man so there's not a piece of metal that can come my way that I can't fix. And I'm telling you, I've seen him cut cars in half that had been totaled, that, uh, and he cut the back part that had been totaled and find another back part from, the, from a junk or salvage yard and put them back together. I've seen him do it with a Mercedes and, and put it back together. Everything worked just right. Yeah, Dad did. Someone could put a, a mechanical thing in a human being. I know, Dad, you could have done great things. And he did. God allows us to go further. And this is what God was doing with Abram. And so Abram departed as God had spoken to him. Abram heard the promises of God. And those promises were pretty good. I mean, think about this. I'm going to bless those that bless you. Now, if God did it for Abram, God can do it for us. Don't you know God's word said he's not a respecter of person? So if God could bless those that bless you, that bless, bless those that bless Abraham, he could also do it for us. And so I want to tell every Christian out there, you just pray, Lord, let someone come my way and bless me. It doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be a, a, a new home. It doesn't have to be all that. Maybe it's just a prayer. Maybe it's a word of encouragement. But the same God that allows you to be blessed it's the same God that will turn around and bless somebody else. And that's powerful, folks. See, let me share something else. Abram was in a position to hear from God. Are you in a position to hear from him? He heard the promises that God spoke to him and believed them. And from there, God said, leave. He packed up, packed all what he had. He's got his wife and his nephew Lot, whose father had died, that evidently Abraham, Abram, was being a surrogate father to Lot. He followed him. Now, in the process of all that, God blessed Abraham and he became rich in cattle and rich in influence, and God used him in a mighty way. And I want you to understand that he was a template. He was a template that we can understand, that we can see, that God uses to, to bless a template that we can follow to be blessed. One, he listened to God. Are you listening? Two, he followed God's command. Are you following his word? He left his home. He went to the unknown to experience the promise of God. Every now and then, if you expect to go deeper and you expect God to bless you, you got to leave the comfortability of where you are at and walk in the unknown. I may not know exactly where I'm going, but I know who's leading me. I may not know exactly what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. You may not know what tomorrow will bring, but you know who holds your tomorrow. And so when God inspires you to step forward, step forward. Oh, amen. amen. We've got a comedian here by the name of Reverend Cranberry. And I know that God has blessed him and, 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 and he, his mother, his, his grandmother was a powerful member of this church. And, and God, through her reflection and her walk with God, 
bless their children. And now he's a grandchild, bless him. And, and check this out. Blessed him so much that he gave his son some natural ability. And now he's a, signed another contract from one team to another, but he's in the NFL for the land of Falcons. I'm telling you, God can bless your children. You just follow him. God can bless your children. I, I believe that if you've got children, they may be nephews that you, you've pulled in under you. They may have been someone that you have been a, a mentor to. The way he's blessed you, he can bless them. I want you to understand that. And let me tell you something else about Abram. And his name was changed to Abraham. When he left, when he left Haran, and after he left Haran, he went to a place and he went to a mountain and he pitched his tent and having one area on the left, west and another area on the east and guess what he did he built an altar unto the Lord see I want to tell you that when you connect with God and it's not a place then it's not I'm, I'm just going to go through the motions and when church opens back up and people come it's not one of those things well I'm just going because it's, it's what I've been taught to do but I, after church is over I live any kind of way I want to no Abram what in his process stopped and built an altar and he worshiped God. And when after he got to Egypt, because he ended up going to Egypt, when he came back, he stopped at the same place that he built an altar and he prayed and worshiped God again. Yeah. Now, now, now you might say, but I'm not able. I don't have what he's got. Well, yeah, you do. Me and yes, you do. What do you mean? I, I, I'm not that. I'm not, I'm not, I can't do what he did. Well, let me tell you what he did, because there was another side to Abram. You know, his wife, Sarai, who became Sarah, I mean, she was a fox. She looked good. She was beautiful. And as Abraham was leading to go into Egypt, because there was a family where he was at, and he went into Egypt, he told his wife, he said, listen, when the princes of this country, not princes as in girl, but princes plural, prince and plural, when they see you, they're going to kill me and take you and take you to their king. Please tell them that I'm your brother so that they'll have mercy and they'll spare me because I am your brother. Now we won't go into the genealogy. You have to study that on your own. Uh, but please tell them. And so the king took, the Pharaoh took Abraham's wife and was going to make her one of his concubines. And what happened, the Lord began to reveal to Pharaoh, wait a minute. Don't mess with this woman. She belongs to Abraham. That's his wife. And, and Pharaoh called Abraham and he had a conversation that went something like this. Why do you lie? The Lord revealed to me, God revealed to me in a dream that, that that's your wife. And so he told all the folks, let them leave. Let him take, let him go with his belongings. And matter of fact, God was going to kill me, but I'm letting you go so that I can live. But but take what you've got, and then I'm going to give you some more, and I'm going to give you some more riches and everything. And, and please leave so the hand of God doesn't come upon you. I will bless those that bless you. And, and, and so God spared the life of the king. Now, now, wait a minute, but how does that have to do with, with you? Well, this is what it has to do with you. Abraham wasn't perfect. Neither are you. Abraham wasn't a goody two shoes. Neither are you. Abraham didn't have it all together all the time. Neither do you. Well, what about you, Reverend Hash? Neither do I. If it had not been for the Lord, I'd be all messed up. Well, what are you saying? Abraham 
had fear in his life, and fear led to one decision after another. Now, now let me share. I'm going to bring this back. Abraham now at one point goes to another area where there's a king. And guess what? He, re he repeats the same thing. Tells his wife, hey, I'm going to be in trouble if they know I'm your husband. Please tell them that I'm your brother. And so she does that. God begins to speak to Abimelech. He begins to talk to him and tell him that that is his wife and he's going to face a death penalty if he does not turn back things back and put it back where it was. So he did. So I'm saying this with Abraham. How many of you have messed up more than once in the same thing? How many of you have fallen by the wayside in the same thing? How many of you have done something that you shouldn't have done and you thought you got over it. You thought you got strong but there was a moment the devil came and spoke to you or messed with you, messed with your flesh and you ended up falling again. You thought you were delivered. You thought you were blessed. You thought you were doing what you needed to do but somewhere along the line you messed up again. That's what happens to people sometimes. Maybe they got mad. Maybe you let anger get hold of you. Maybe you let doubt get hold of you. The Bible says all that's not faith is sin. And so maybe you begin to sin because you had doubt in your mind and you didn't believe and trust God. And because you did not trust God, you couldn't go further until you got it right with God. And so, so Abraham, was, Abraham was not no goody two shoes. Abraham had issues. Abraham had problems. Abraham had things that didn't go right in his life. Abraham, as blessed as he was, ended up going down the wrong road from time to time. But the Lord, the same God that blessed you and brought you out and brought Abraham out more than once is the same God that can bless you and bring you out more than once. Oh, I, but I'm not all that good. You don't have to be good. The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. But it's because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross that we can have relationship with God. Abraham stopped. Yes, he did. He messed up. But God fixed him. How many of you messed up and God fixed him? And he began to believe the promise. And because of that, God began to continue to bless him. I'm telling you, there's some other points I want to make to you. When Abraham listened to God and follows his command and left his home and went to an unknown place to experience the promise of God, God knew Abraham. I, I told you, that I read a scripture from Genesis chapter 18. And in that scripture, the Lord is getting ready to do something to a community, an area that's living in sin. And, and because they're not living right, there's going to be judgment on them. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Now, why would God tell Abraham what he's about to do? Because his nephew lived in that area. Some of y'all are blessed because they're godly parents. And so God told Abraham. Abraham began to talk to God. And he said, will you destroy this whole city, this area, if there are 50 righteous in it. And God said, I won't destroy it if you can find 50. If you get there 50. Couldn't find 50. Came back again. Abraham still trying to get this thing worked out. God, will you spare the city if we can find 45 people? Then it went down to 40. Then 30. God still couldn't find 30, then 20, and God couldn't find 20. Abraham said, Lord, if you can find 10 people, will you spare the city? And, 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 and check this out. No, we couldn't find 10 people. That's right. But guess what? Because Lot was connected to Abraham as an adopted son. 
because Lot was connected to Abraham who had faith in God. And when Abraham believed God, the Bible said through faith it was accounted to Abraham as righteousness. When you believe God, that is counting to you as righteousness. And God took Abraham's nephew and his family and brought them out of that community, that city, before destruction came. Why? It wasn't because they were so good. It wasn't that they were so great. Lot had a lot of problems too. Had ego and, and greed and everything else. But God spared Abraham's nephew because of Abraham. And you don't know what God will do in your family because of you. You don't know what God will do when your loved ones because of you. You don't know what God will do with that child or that relative that's getting drunk all the time or lying and stealing, going in and out of the jail, getting locked up and everything. You don't know what God will do about the one that had that is that that something happened in there, acting half crazy. God's able to work it out in their life because of you. Let me tell you, I use a scripture all the time. David said, I've been young and now I'm old and I've never, never, never seen the righteous forsaken. Check this out. God is saying, I won't forsake those that are righteous, those that are living for me. But then he said, nor my nor his seed begging bread. That means God will bless your seed. Well, who are your seed? It's my children, it's my grandchildren, it's the nephew I adopted, the niece I adopted, maybe that person that's on the football field that I coach and that I work with and they become like a son to me. Maybe it's someone that doesn't have a father in the home, but, but because of the influence that God had placed on me, they look at me like a father and God said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. That means God's going to take care of you, nor his seed, nor his seed begging bread. That means God's going to look after you and your family. Those that are under the umbrella of your family. They may not deserve it. Well, guess what? You didn't either. They may not deserve everything, but guess what? We didn't either. But God still looked after us. We were once lost, but God brought us through. God wasn't lost, but we were lost. And we didn't find God. God found us on on, on on the road where we were messed up and God reached down his hand and pulled us close and washed us in his blood, cleansed us and made us whole, made things right because of our connection with God. And if you've got to, I'm talking about a template, I'm talking about a template for a godly man. I'm talking about there's some things. Abraham believed God. Abraham followed God. Even though Abraham wasn't perfect, Abraham took time and he may have learned it from his father on the journey. He stopped along the way. You've got to stop along the way. You've got to make an altar for yourself. It might be in your bedroom or your knees beside your bed. It might be in the kitchen table. It might be in the, the living room. It may be upstairs, downstairs. It may be in the closet. Oh, hallelujah, you know that, that movie, Prayer Closet. It may be in the bathroom, it may be in your backyard, it may be on your deck, it may be on your front stoop, but you've got to find a place that is your altar, and you've got to go to God and begin to pray to God. And the way that Abraham played, prayed to God, he remembered that God said to him, those that bless you, I'm going to bless them. And those that curse you, I'm going to curse them. I want to tell you, for those of you that are trying to mess with God's children, I, for those of you that are trying to put down God's children, for those of you that are trying to hurt God's children, you better watch out because the God that says, I will bless those that bless you, I will curse those that curse you. You want to know why your pockets are full of holes. You want to know why you can't get things right. You want to know why things are messing up in your life. Because maybe you have not done and lived like God wanted you to live. And because of that, you have been cursed. You have made mistakes and God is saying, enough. I'm going to call you into, into accountability. Listen, the Bible teaches us, touch not my anointing. Well, how do you get to be anointed? Is that a preacher? I'm going to tell you, you don't have to be a preacher to be anointed. 
You don't have to be a choir member to be anointed. You don't have to be a deacon or a trustee to be anointed. You don't have to be an usher to be anointed. You might be just one person that sits in the pew, but while you're sitting in the pew, you're praying that God will bless somebody. When you go home, you, you stop around the corner. You're always nice and you're being kind to other folk and you're letting the Lord use you through your kindness and your gentleness and your love. And, and when you do that, that's part of the template that God is using. Oh, let me share with you a few other things and then I'm going to close out and wrap up what we're doing. But I want you to understand. I want you to see. I want you to understand. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. The template. There's a template. Integrity. Integrity matters. Proverbs 20 and 7 says, A righteous man walks in integrity. Blessed are his children after him. You want your children to be blessed? Walk in integrity. That's part of the template. Here's another. Those that parent children that are not his and that you follow after the pattern of template that God shows, check this out. God says in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. What God is saying, I'm going to include you in my family, and in my family, I look after my own. And, and then, then, then the part of the template is, do not emotionally incite or provoke your children. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the teaching and the training and the instruction of the Lord. And Colossians 3, 21 picks back up that and says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Encourage them. That's part of the template. Another part of the template is start the direction uh, that your family will go. Which way is my family going to go? Well, the Bible says train up your child in the way that they will go. And Proverbs has said, and when they are old, they will not turn from it. You start them on the right path. But wait a minute. They're 12, 13, and 14 years old. Didn't I say earlier that in your age, you, you can, God can start things over? You train your children. Get them on the right path. Let them see you do it. Don't just, just don't talk the talk. Walk the walk. Don't, don't just say, do what I say and not what I do. You model it, it'll become ingrained in them. And then listen to this. Psalm 9, verse 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. God is our refuge. Template, follow God. Here's another thing. Why go to Him? Why should I go to God? Why don't I go to my best friends and my buddies and my political realm or this or that? Well, let me share with you. Psalm 31 20. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. All those, take those in. Look in the Bible. Study the Bible. And you'll find other scriptures that give you what you are or should be and should include as a template to help you serve God, to bless your family and bless those that come behind you. I'm glad. I'm glad because God had a template for my life. And because he had a template for my life, he looked after me and he blessed me. I've got one more song I'm going to play for you. And then we're going to pray. They look the same except for color. And God expects us to see color. He does. He expects us to see color. But I'm going to share with you this right here. As he expects us to see color, if you break those things open and you look at the contents of what was in the day, and you break them open and put them in the frying pan, they look the same. 
truly understand and share this with you. We are all part of the same race, created by God, and we're part of the human race. I thank God for the movement that's going on. I thank God for those that are rallying together to say we are better than what we've been shown. That we are moving forward and that we want to make change and, and get rid of the systematic evils in our society. But to do the things that are going to bring us closer together so that we can be one. That's what we should be about. And maybe after hearing this sermon, there was someone that's listening out there that you, you know that you're not really right. You know that you're strayed. You know that you don't have a relationship with God, that you're unsaved. Well, 1 John 1.12 says, as many as received him, to them give you the power to become the children of God. All you have to do is receive it. If you do, I promise you, God will. Jesus will come into your life and he'll save you. Because of God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As Minister Smith often says, he talks about from Romans, the 10th chapter, that you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shall be saved. And then it goes on to say in that 13th verse, I said, but for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is say this prayer. It's Father, I know I'm not right. And I know if I were to die right now, I'd be lost, but I'm going to live right with you now. I do believe that Jesus, you're the Son of God. And our Heavenly Father, I do believe that you sent Jesus to be our Savior. To die on the cross for my sins and everyone else's sins. And I accept him now as my personal Savior. You pray that prayer that God has come into your life. Because he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man hear, I will come in. And so be a part. Be connected to him. That's what God's doing. Happy Father's Day, everybody. On next Sunday, we hope to honor all of our students from K-12 and those that even graduated from uh, high school and college. But we hope to honor them. We're going to have an outdoor service. And so, uh, Bethlehem, watch for the emails. Uh, those that have students that have superlative and awards this year, please contact Brittany Patrick. Uh, double check your email list. She's requested the information so that we can get it back and we can recognize your children. In a difficult year, they need to be recognized. In a challenging year, they need to be recognized. They're our children, and we want to support them along the way. Amen. I'm two minutes over after 11 o'clock. But let me share this with you. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for understanding that there's a template for a godly man. And, and that we will try to apply those and put fill in the blanks and the dots and the spaces in our life that need to be filled in so that we can be that godly person, that godly man. And, and we're going to do that. Thank you for those of you that support the church through time we act. And I said, I look at the list and we've got people from Tennessee and Georgia and all over that, that sing contributions, even not, not just church members, but people throughout Winston Salem. Thank you. You made, you made this ministry possible. God bless you. Thank you, everyone that's here. Thank you to the Hawkins clan that's here. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Please give Reverend Cranberry my regards. Uh, a great comedian. You might want to book him sometime. Amen. And to all those that were, I appreciate it.
relationship. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And please tell some daddy somewhere that you thank God for him. Amen. God bless you.